you know that some variety of fish help to clean the water off of harmful insects, bacteria, chemicals, and even help regulate the population of invasive species? A wide variety of fish including wrasse, cichlids, catfish, pipefish, lumsuckers, and gobies, display cleaning behaviors across the globe in fresh, brackish, and marine waters, but specifically concentrated in the tropics due to high parasite density. So I have put together some common fish that can be kept as pet also serve the purpose of cleaning and maintaining the water system they are kept in. These fish will turn out to be beneficial to you in many ways. Now, let's take a look at top 10 pet fish species that can be beneficial to humans. Number 1. Mosquito Fish Gambusia affinis Mosquito fish are used in standing water sources, including unused or abandoned swimming pools, private ponds, bird baths, fountains, and water troughs. These fish got their name because they are so adept at eliminating mosquitoes. In a single hour, a mosquito fish can eat up to 160 wrigglers. Mosquito larvae These fish are native to the eastern United States which reaches as far west as Texas, and as far south as Alabama. Compared to the male's 4 cm, the female grows to a height of around 6 cm. The water's pH, acidity, alkalinity, softness, or hardness, as well as any differences, have minimal impact on the mosquito fish's preferences. The fact that mosquito fish live in the same quiet water as wrigglers do is one reason why they are so effective at catching them. The mosquito fish prefer water temperatures around 78 degrees Fahrenheit, because it tends to be a little aggressive, it is best to keep it with other fish of the same species. Since mosquito fish are an invasive species, introducing them into sensitive environments or natural streams may result in the extinction of native species and an alteration of the ecological balance. Number 2. Goldfish, Carassius oridus. These fish have evolved to resemble anything, from the simple golden red fish that people use to win at fairs to flashy monsters with fantails, bulbous heads, and neon coloration. The unruly goldfish are omnivores that are employed to consume small crustaceans, mosquito larvae, zooplankton, and other insects. A goldfish in the wild, which may grow up to 45 centimeters long, is also more likely to be grayish yellow or gray silver in color, rather than pure gold. Goldfish are good for feeding mosquito larvae because they enjoy quiet or slow moving water, just like mosquito fish do. They are unconcerned with the pH or hardness of the water, and they can endure relatively arctic conditions, as long as the water is not completely frozen. Unlike the mosquito fish, which is agitated and hostile toward other cold water fish, the goldfish is peaceful. The mature goldfish has a body length that ranges from 12 to 22 centimeters on average, with a maximum body length of 45 centimeters. The mature fish can weigh up to 3 kilograms at the most. Number 3. Guppies, Pacilia reticulata, like goldfish. The guppy has been bred for aquarium owner's delight. As a result, it has a diverse range of colors, patterns, and fin shapes. It originates from the Caribbean and is related to mosquito fish. They are regularly added to both natural and man-made water features as a mosquito deterrent. Studies have shown that guppies can eat a significant amount of mosquito larvae. Guppies can thrive in harsh or even very hard water. Just make sure the water parameters are accurate and that the tank is cycled appropriately to provide a suitable home for your guppies in captivity. To mimic the underwater rockery and vegetation of the fish's native habitat, use plants and tank accents. Water temperature should be between 75 to 80 Fahrenheit, and acidity should be between 6.8 to 7.6 pH. Guppies typically measure 5 cm in length when fully developed. Male and female guppies both grow to be twice as big. Males can reach lengths of up to 3 cm, while females can reach lengths of up to 5.4 centimeters. Guppies can live up to two years in both the wild and in captivity. Number 4. Koi Cyprinus rubrofiscus. Koi fish do eat mosquito larvae if they come across them in their pond. If you already feed your koi fish a well-balanced diet, they may not be as interested in the mosquito larvae since they are not the most appetizing food for them. You shouldn't rely solely on your koi to keep the mosquito larvae in your pond under control. They are indigenous to Japan and are relatives of the goldfish. They both come from the carp family. These fish have been bred for their eye-catching patterns and hues. Each of these colors and patterns has a specific name in Japan. Koi are commonly kept as pets in outdoor ponds. Since they frequently contain intricate rockwork and waterfalls, ponds may be wonderful places to appreciate your koi and even make a stunning backdrop for your house. Koi are temperate freshwater fish that can survive in waters that range in temperature from 45 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. 
koi should be kept at a temperature of 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. A deep pond can maintain a thermocline temperature gradient in the water, allowing koi to experience different temperatures. Now, are you also looking for a fish that will clean your aquarium so you never have to worry about tank upkeep? I'm sorry, but that mythical creature doesn't exist. However, certain fish are very skilled at eating leftover food, algae, decaying plant matter, and even pesky snails. The next four species on this list are some of our favorite fish for cleaning up after a freshwater aquarium. Number 5. Rainbow Sharks, Epilzir Hinchos Frenidum, and Redtail Sharks, Epilzir Hinchos by color. These freshwater sharks may seem weird at first, but you'd be amazed at how well they keep things tidy. Both shark species are scavengers that take leftover food that is tucked between accessories, rocks, and equipment. Rainbow sharks will even eat algae as part of their diet. Red tail sharks and rainbow sharks can easily be confused because of their similar appearances. Despite being to exhibit many behavioral, dietary, and habitable similarities, as well as some distinct variances, the rainbow shark originates from freshwater in Southeast Asia, while the red tail shark originates from Thailand. The red tail shark lives in fast-flowing rivers or streams, but the rainbow sharks live in rivers with sandy substrates and medium currents. The red tail and rainbow sharks are both at risk of going extinct in their natural habitats although there are more of them in the aquarium trade. Another thing the rainbow and red tail shark have in common is the characteristics of the water. The optimal water parameters for both species are 77-78 degrees Fahrenheit, a pH of 6.57.3, and a water hardness of 511. When fully developed, rainbow sharks can measure up to 15 centimeters in length. They are fish with a strong sense of territoriality, and are prone to acting aggressively toward lesser fish. The red tail shark, a tough fish, can also reach a maximum length of 15 centimeters like the rainbow shark. While most only grow to 12 centimeters, they have a jet-like form, a streamlined body, and a pointed snout that enable them to move swiftly in locations with high flow. Number 6. Earth Eaters, Geophagus, Small Crustaceans, fruit that has fallen from trees and plants, and insect larvae make up the majority of their diet in the wild. For this reason, earth eaters need a significant amount of roughage, cellulose chitin, in their diet. These can be found in green plants and crab shells, and incorporating these foods into their diets can help them avoid bloating. Earth eaters first appeared in South America, primarily in Colombia and Venezuela. Forested tributaries, forested streams, and particular varieties of backwater habitats with sandy bottoms and gravel are their preferred habitats. The ideal temperature range for earth eaters, which ranges from 70 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, is lower than that of many other South American cichlids. The majority of earth eaters are fairly large cichlids. The largest can grow to a length of 30 centimeters, but most are between 10 and 12 centimeters. Number 7. Flagfish, Jordanella floridi. This species is omnivorous. It feeds on algae and other plant matter, in addition to small invertebrates and zooplankton, which it preys upon as micro-predators. Given that they are one of the only fish that can consume significant amounts of hair algae naturally in proper aquariums, they are frequently utilized to do so. Native to North America, the males of this fish exhibit an exquisite pattern that resembles the stars and stripes on the flag of the United States. Flagfish are typically 6 centimeters long, strong fish with a truncated snout that has been likened to a bulldog's. Temperatures between 64 and 86 Fahrenheit are ideal for them. Number 8. Cory Catfish, Corridoras. The Cory Catfish is a tiny bottom feeder, and a very effective cleaner. It will clean up after messier fish that feed at the surface and mid-level of the tank by scavenging the leftovers that have fallen to the bottom. They quietly scavenge, using their barbels, or whiskers, to search for food scraps, worms, and tiny crustaceans in the dirt and spaces between objects. Like a living robot vacuum, Cory catfish enthusiastically suck up any food that gets away from the surface eaters. They can't survive on leftovers alone, so make sure to feed them special foods like ripashi gel food, sinking wafers, and frozen bloodworms to keep their stomachs full. The popular Cory catfish comes in a broad range of hues and lengths, including 2.5 cm small corridoras, 5 to 7.6 cm regular cories, and 13 cm larger brachis variations. Now, did you know that spending time admiring fish can help people with Alzheimer's disease live better? One study found that patients who watched the fish swim around were less anxious, more focused, and had better appetites. One of the best ways to relax is to return home to a beautiful saltwater aquarium. 
where your finned friends can be seen flowing about gently. You can achieve a state of meditation if you can focus on your fish. You can feel like a completely different person in a matter of minutes, because of their soothing movements, and the sound of the water flowing through their filter. Number 9. Convict Sitch Lids, a Madelania Nigrafishida. The little bit feisty convict sitch lids are all native to Central America and suitable for keeping as pets. Even though they are only one-fourth as big as an Oscar, they behave and interact like much bigger fish. They will bravely defend their area by pushing and biting intruders, even when confronted by a person. It is fun to watch these fish since they have a variety of personalities and are quite fascinating. Having said that, it's critical to understand their optimal parameters in both directions. There is always a sweet spot that you ought to pursue. Water should be between 79 degrees Fahrenheit and 84 degrees Fahrenheit in temperature, with a pH of 6.5 to 8 and a hardness of 10 to 15 dh. When fully mature, convict sitch lids measure about 10 to 12.7 centimeters in length. In comparison to other sitch lid species, these fish are quite small. The benefit of this is that you can keep them in smaller tanks than you can with other species. Number 10. Tilapia Oreochromis nilotikus. Tilapia are among several fish species belonging to the family of Cichlidae, native to Africa and Middle East, and they are very popular around the world. The fact that tilapia is hardy, adaptable, and will eat nearly anything, is one of the reasons it is such a well-liked fish among fish farmers across the world. These characteristics also make it a great aquarium fish provided, of course, that your aquarium is big enough. Even inexperienced aquarists can keep a variety of tilapia species. Tilapia can also be kept in outdoor ponds, but unless you live in a tropical climate, most species are sensitive to cold and can only be kept outside during the hottest months of the year. Finding more about a fish's temperament and maximum size is crucial before you buy any for your aquarium. While smaller tilapia can be kept in aquariums as small as 150 liters 40 gallons, larger tilapia need at least 250 liters 70 gallons. It's also critical to keep in mind that maintaining high water quality in a small aquarium is more challenging than in a large one. If you are a beginner, you should always choose a larger tank than the bare minimum, because it will offer you a safety margin. An experienced aquarist might be able to keep tilapia in a relatively small aquarium. Due to the fact that many kinds of tilapia consume plants and some of these fish enjoy digging, using plants in tilapia aquariums can become difficult. It is therefore common to use rocks, roots and similar types of aquarium decoration to create hiding spots for tilapia. Ideally, flat rocks should be included in the setup together with gravel and sand to cover the ground. If you are willing to risk the life of a few plants your tilapia will greatly appreciate it. To avoid digging, pick affordable, hardy plants, and cover the roots with pebbles. Tilapias can be housed in groups, but because they are territorial, especially during the breeding season, it is recommended to set natural boundaries inside the aquarium. Many tilapia species may devour small aquarium fish, making them unsuitable tank mates for these fish. As an alternative, tilapias can be mixed with catfish, barbs, and other semi-aggressive cichlids. The cichlid family includes all species of tilapia. The majority of species can live in both acidic and alkaline waters with a pH range of 6 to 8. As long as long as the water temperature is higher than 23 degrees centigrade, or 74 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the fish will be more susceptible to disease in waters with poor quality. That is the list for top 10 fish beneficial to humans. If you liked any fish in specific do comment it in the comment section. Thanks for watching like, share and subscribe this channel for more videos like this.